This is the chapter review. Uh, section 8.1 in this chapter had to do with functions. A function is a set of ordered pairs um, or a relation where there is exactly one value of y for every x. And it would pass two tests or one of two tests depending on whether you have ordered pairs or you have a graph. A set of ordered pairs is a function if none of the x values are repeated. So if I look over here and I compare these three ordered pairs, none of the x's are repeated, so yes, this is a function. This one, the 5 is repeated, so no, this does not graph a function. Um, a relation shown on a graph is a function if it passes the vertical line test. So let's say we have graphs and we want to know if what is graphed on these things is a function or not. So let's say I graph that. This one would be a function because when I drop a straight line down it only ever pat crosses that red line one time but let's say I have something like this. Then if I drop the vertical line test down going straight down like this it's going to hit it in more than one location so this is a no. This is not a function. So if you have ordered pairs you check to see if the x is repeated. If the x is repeated it's not a function. If you have a graph, you check to see if it passes the vertical line test. If it does, it is a function. Section 8.2 was um, linear equations and two variables. So what you did here is you found a solution and then you use the, use, you graphed using the table. So here's my equation. Let me pick some values for x. Let's say negative 1. 0, uh, 1, and maybe negative 2, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in those values for x. I have 4 times negative 1 plus 3. When I do that, I find a y value of negative 1. So this is the point negative 1, negative 1. When x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to negative 1. Then I'm going to plug in my 0, 4 times 0 plus 3 is going to give me a y value of 3 because 4 times 0 is 0 plus 3 so that gives me the point 0, 3. Then I'm going to plug in the 1 which is going to give me a y value of 7 because 4 plus 3 is 7 so when x is equal to 1 y is equal to 7. And then I'm going to plug in negative 2 and that, oops, and that's going to give me plus 3. That's going to give me a value of negative 8 plus 3, which is going to be a negative 5. So I have a negative 2, negative 5. Then I'm going to take these values over here, and I'm going to graph them, and they should be a straight line. So let me go ahead and graph these on here. Um, I'll make my x and y here. almost need a thicker marker than that. Okay, so if I graph these values that I just found, I graph the point, let's do this in red, negative 1, negative 1, which is right here, 0, 3, which is right here, 1, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then I have negative 2, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so you have a straight line that goes through those points. Let's try and line up my ruler here. And so that right there is the graph of y equals 4x plus 3. Let's 
do another one. Now notice on this one, you have to rearrange the equation first. So the first thing I have to do is I have to subtract the 2x because I have to have the y by itself to be able to put this in the table form and solve for the y. So I've got y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. So um, let's pick some values here. Let's pick uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So I'm going to plug in, so I have negative 2 times 0 plus 5, which is going to give me a value of 5. So when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 5. I'm going to plug in a 1, so I have negative 2 times 1 plus 5, which is going to give me a 3. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 3. I'm going to plug in a 2. So that's going to give me a value of 1. So when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 1. And I'm going to plug a value of 3 in, which is going to give me a negative 1. Um, so when x is equal to 3, y is equal to negative 1. All right, so now I'm going to graph those. X and Y axis on here. All right, so the point zero five is one, two, three, four, five. That's the point zero five. And then I have one, three. I have two, one. And then I have 3, negative 1. So that graphs the straight line. I'm going to go ahead and draw it. So that line right there is the graph of that. All right, section 8.3 was graphing linear equations using the x and the y intercept. If you remember, when you find the, the x-intercept means where it crosses the x-axis, the y-intercept means where it crosses the y-axis. So let me go ahead and put my y-axis and x-axis on here. So to find the x-intercept, you always let y equal 0 because anywhere along here is going to have a y value of 0. So I'm going to um, do that. And then when I find the y-intercept, I'm going to let the x equal 0 because anywhere along here is going to have an x value of 0. So I take this equation, substitute 0 for the y, and then I'm going to solve it. I'll switch sides. I'm going to add a positive 2 to both sides, which is going to give me 4x is equal to 2, or x is equal to 1 half. Okay, so where it crosses the x-axis is at 1 half. So I'm going to put a dot right there on the 1 half, halfway between 0 and 1. Um, to get my y-intercept, I'm going to let my x equal 0, so I have 4 times 0 plus a negative 2, so y equals negative 2, so I'll put a dot right there at negative 2. That gives me two points to be able to draw a line through. And that is the graph of that equation using the x and the y intercept. Let's do another one. Of the, well, actually, then you have some of these where they don't have the x and the y. Like this one just has the x. If you remember the shortcut, the x is made up of v's, so this is a vertical line. Okay, so the x and y axis. Let's 
So this is a vertical line through where x is equal to negative 1, which is right here. So this graphs this line right here. Everywhere along that line, x is equal to negative 1. It doesn't matter what y is equal to because every value of y you have is going to have an x value of negative 1. This one, if you remember right, if you turn that y, it looks like an h. So this one is horizontal. Now remember, these are only when you don't have an x and a y. See, they have a singular x. This one has a singular y. So this is a horizontal line through where y is equal to 4. So I find where y is equal to 4. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. So I draw a horizontal line through that dot right there where y is equal to 4. All right, section 8, 4 has to do with a slope. The slope describes the steepness of a line in terms of rise over run. Remember, you have to get up before you can run. There's an equation for finding the slope given two points, and this is the equation. The difference in the y's over the difference in the x's. So I'm going to find the slope of the line that's going through 4, 3, and negative 4, negative 4. So I just use the equation above. I'm going to let this one be x sub 2, y sub 2, and this one be x sub 1, y sub 1. So I have got 3 minus a negative 4, because see there's a minus between it and the actual number, or y sub 1, is negative 4. Then I have a 4 minus a negative 4. This is going to give me on the top, it's going to give me a 7, and on the bottom it's going to give me the 8. So the slope of the line that goes through those two points is 7 over 8. Sometimes you have a graph of a line and you have to figure out what the slope is given the graph, okay? This is my x or my y and this is my x. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is find two points on here. And so I can find this point. This is the point negative 5, positive 5. And this is the point positive 5, negative 5. So using those two points that I find on my graph, I can use my slope formula. So I have a negative 5 minus 5, this minus this, over this minus this. So that gives me a 5 minus a negative 5. So on the top, I'm going to have a negative 10. On the bottom, I'm adding the opposite of the second number, which gives me a positive 10, which means the slope here is equal to negative 1, or negative 1 over 1, which is what that reduces to. All right, you have different types of slopes. If you have a slope that rises, like that, it will have a positive value. So whatever you got from the slope formula is going to end up being a positive number. When a slope falls, that slope is going to be negative. Okay, when you did the slope formula, you would get a negative answer. So like negative one-half or negative two-thirds. If your slope is vertical, so in other words, if your line is vertical, the slope is undefined, which means if you have, um, if you're plugging into the slope formula, you might get a number on the top and a zero on the bottom, okay? Doesn't no matter what the number on the top is, anytime you have a zero on the bottom, your slope is empty set because you cannot do 
10 divided by 0. There is no number that you can multiply by 0 that's going to give you the 10. If you have a horizontal slope, so the line is horizontal, the slope then equals 0. This time when you use the slope formula you're going to have 0 on the top and another number on the bottom. Anytime you have 0 on the top, your answer is 0 because 0 divided by 7 is 0 because 0 times 7 gives you 0. So you can have a positive slope, you can have a negative slope, you can have an undefined slope, and you can have a 0 slope. Um, 8, 6 has to do with slope intercept form. The proper slope intercept form is y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So be able to state the slope and the y-intercept from a given equation. This one's in the correct form because this one is in y equals mx plus b form. So the m value or the slope value is right there. So slope equals negative 3. The y-intercept is right there, so the y-intercept equals 4, because this is your slope, and this is your y-intercept. Now this one is not in the correct form, so the very first thing I would have to do is rearrange it. So I'm going to add a negative 4x to both sides, so I end up with 2y equals negative 4x plus 10. Then I have to divide everything by 2, which is going to give me y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. So my slope is negative 2. My y-intercept equals 5. So, I also have to be able to graph uh, from a given equation, and the equation for me to graph it has to be in y equals mx plus b. If it isn't, I will rearrange it before I graph it. Now, this particular one is, so let me go ahead and maybe if I use red for my x and y, it'll show up more. Okay, so my y-intercept on this is positive 1, so I put a point right there at positive 1. Then my slope is 1 over 2, so I'm going to go up 1 and over to the right 2. Now that gives me two points through which I can draw the line. And that line is the graph of y equals 1 half x plus 1. This one is not in the right form, so the very first thing I'm going to have to do is put it in the right form, and then we'll figure out how to graph it. So I'm going to have to subtract the 3x from both sides, and that's going to give me y equals negative 3x plus 4. Now it's in the right form. So this is my y-intercept. I'm going to go up 4. Then I have a negative 3 as a slope. I'm going to go ahead and put a 1 underneath it. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3 because it's negative. And then I'll go to the right 1 because the 3 is negative and the 1 is positive. So I'll draw a line through this. And that is the line represented by that equation right there. 8, 7, we were writing linear equations. Um, so this is just the opposite. Rather than taking an equation and graph it, we're taking information and writing an equation. So there are several different situations. The first situation would be if they give you the slope and the y-intercept. For instance, the slope is 2 thirds, the y-intercept is negative 3. Remember, you are putting it in y equals mx plus b form. This is where the slope goes. 
and this is where the y-intercept goes. So I have y equals 2 thirds, because that's your slope, x, don't forget the x, plus, here's my y-intercept, negative 3. So that's the equation that has a slope of 2 thirds and a y-intercept of negative 3. Um, I might also have to do this given a graph. Um, let me do... Okay, so let's say I have that line graphed and they want me to come up with the equation. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for where it crosses the y-axis. So I have y equals, I'm going to put the slope right there, I put the y-intercept right there. The y-intercept is 2, so I'll go ahead and put that there. I've got to figure out the slope, so I'm going to go from this point to this point. I'm going to go down 2, so I have a negative 2, and I'm going to go over to the left, negative 1, so I have a negative 2 over negative 1, which is the same thing as positive 2. So that's the equation that matches up with that particular line. All right, sometimes they give you two points, and they want you to find the equation based on those two points. So we're looking for the equation of the line that goes through negative 1, 10, and 1, negative 2. So the very first thing I do is I find the slope using my slope formula. So I have 10 minus a negative 2 over negative 1 minus 1. Okay, y minus y, x minus x. So that's going to give me 12 over negative 2, which is going to give me a negative 6. So that's going to be my slope. Second thing I do is I plug the slope into y equals mx plus b. So the slope spot goes right where the m is, so I have negative 6x plus b. Then I'm going to choose one of the x's and y's to put in there. It doesn't matter which one, I think I'll choose this one. So I have a negative 2 is equal to negative 6 times 1 plus b. And now I, number 4 is I solve for the b. So I'm going to switch sides here because I want my variable on the left. I'm going to add 6 and add 6, and I'm going to get b equals positive 4. And then the step 5 is I'm going to put the values back in for the m and the b. So y equals the m value was negative 6. Got to put my x there. The b value is 4. So that right there is the equation of the line that goes through negative 1, 10, and 1, negative 2. All right, let's do another one of those. Okay, I'm looking for the equation of the line that goes through those two points. So step one, I'm going to find the slope. So I have negative 1 minus 1, this minus this, and then negative 2 minus 2. That's going to give me a negative 2 on the top and a negative 4 on the bottom which reduces down to positive one-half. So that's my slope. Then I put my slope into my equation. y is equal to one-half x plus b. Then I pick one of my two values to plug in for x and y. Remember, this is x, this is y. So I have one equals one-half times two plus b. Then I'm going to solve for the b. So when I do 1 half of 2, I have 1. So I have 1 plus b equals 1. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And I'm going to find b equals 0. So I plug it back in. And I can say y is equal to 1 half <coughs> x plus 0. All right. 8, 9, you were solving systems of equations. That means you're going to graph two equations to see where they cross. Um, I have different possibilities. They might have one solution, and so we'd have to go ahead and solve for it and see where they cross. They might never cross, which means they're parallel lines, and therefore the answer would be empty set or no solution. Um, they can be the same line, 
So the solution is infinitely many. You see the infinite sign right there. So right here we're going we're gonna to graph both of these on one coordinate plane. So my y-intercept is 1. Then I'm going to go up 1, 2, and to the right 1. So that is that graph right there. Do the best job to get it straight on. Okay, then I have 1, and my, my slope is negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1 and to the right 1. Well, you can see that these two equations have one solution, and that solution is 0, 1. That's where they cross. So I could always check it by plugging it in here to see if it works. So I have 1 equals 2 times 0 plus 1. 1 equals 1. So that one works. I can say 1 equals um, negative 0 plus 1, which gives me 1 equals 1. So that works in that. They have to, both, they have to work in both equations for it to be correct. All right, let's graph this one. Um, obviously, I've got to rearrange this first. I have to add a negative x to both sides. So I have negative x plus 4. And then I would have a negative x plus 2. So I have to graph both of those. So this one I'm going to go up 4, and then I go have a slope of negative 1, so I go down 1 and to the right 1. So that is this first one. And then this one I'm going to go up 2, because that's the y-intercept. Then I have a slope of negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1 and to the right 1, because it's negative 1 over 1. And you can see that those two are parallel lines, which we, means they'll never cross. And the solution for this system of equations is empty set. So there is no x and y that they both have in common. The other way that we can solve system of equations is by substitution, which means we never put them on a graph. So I look for where I have an x or a y that's very simple. And I have it right here. And this becomes my key that I'm going to put into the other equation. So on this equation, rather than putting the x, I put what the x is equal to. So I have y is equal to 3 times 0 minus 4, which gives me y equals negative 4. So I know x equals 0 and y equals negative 4. So these two equations would cross at 0, negative 4 if I graph them. This one looks like a good key. So I'm going to take that and I'll plug it back in here uh, where the y is. So x minus, and rather than write the y, I write what it's equal to. So it's equal to negative 3 equals 15. I'm going to add the opposite of the second number there. So I have x plus 15 equals 15. I'm going to solve for the x. And I have x is equal to 0. So these two cross where x is 0 and y is negative 3. All right, the last section, section 810, is graphing inequalities. This is doing exactly what you were doing as far as graphing the equations, but this time you have to shade the area that they're talking about. So they're not looking for just one particular graph. They're looking for a line and an area either above or below the line. If it's, gra if it's a greater than symbol, it's going to be above the line. If it's a less than symbol, it's going to be below the line. If there's a line underneath the greater than or the less than, then the line you graph is going to be solid.
So this one is going to be a solid line. I go down negative 2 because that's the y-intercept. I go up 1, 2, 3, and to the right 1. Okay, it is a solid line through there. And it is less than, which means I'm going to graph below or shade below the line. Let's do this one over here. All right, my y-intercept is 2, so I'm going to go up 2, and then my slope is 2 over 3, Go up, so I go up 2 and over to the right, 1, 2, 3. Now notice this does not have a line under the inequality, so this is a dotted line, which means the line is not included in the graph. Okay, I still put arrows on both ends. And this too says below, so I'm going to shade underneath it. All right, your homework is page 224, or 424 through 428, 11 through 35 odd, 39 through 43 odd, and 47 through 55 odd.